Hi everyone. For today's review, we're going to go back to the skies and have a look at one of the most aerodynamically perfect aircraft that has ever graced the skies. And that description is apt because this book is called Beauty of the Skies, the story of the DH-91 Albatross by Rob Mulder and published by European Airlines. Rob Mulder, who is this wonderful gentleman, has done a fantastic job at detailing the complete history of this aircraft. He has written extensively on aircraft that are not as well known and particularly focusing on those pre-World War II. And you can find a link to the publisher and their extensive works down below. The DH-91 Albatross is, as Rob has noted, always bundled together with a complete history of de Havilland aircraft. But this is, this, this is the one book that details the complete history of this very aesthetically pleasing aircraft. As beautiful as it looks, however, this plane was not perfect. And we find that the patent sealing system for holding the plane together, it was basically hermetically sealed with a combination of wood and resin, wasn't the best and in particular the resin tend to fade away and so the planes had a very short lifespan. And while the plane may look beautiful and delicate in the air, in particular the landing gear was rather fragile. Indeed so fragile it had a tendency to collapse and one of the more interesting anecdotes included in this book involves an incident where the plane had landed and was being maneuvered over onto a hard stand. But once the landing gear transitioned from rolling onto the soft grass onto a hard concrete, it decided nope and gave out and the plane just literally plopped onto the ground. No one was hurt, but it's a fantastic uh, look at the fragility of some of the components of the aircraft. In addition to this, it also had a high fuel consumption and the rudders weren't the easiest to control. But had circumstances been different, this plane could have had a wonderful career. But global events intervened and just as this aircraft was entering service, World War II struck and most of the planes that were already in service, I believe there were about seven of them, were eventually lost through crashes and just inability to maintain the aircraft themselves. The book is laid out in a straightforward manner. We get a history of the de Havilland Company, a look at the circumstances and the reasons why the de Havilland Company produced the DH-91 Albatross, how it was built, the techniques, the new methods that were employed, uh, the reasoning behind why the plane was what it was. It was originally designed to be an intercontinental mail carrier before it was expanded into a passenger uh, aircraft. He looks at the trials, the testing and the development between both the intercontinental model and the passenger airliner model. The passenger version was taken on by Imperial Airways and it became known as the F-Class because all the planes were named F-words such as Frobisher, Falcon, Fiona. We learn of the trials and tribulations through the extensive testing program. One plane that was intentionally tested with an overweight load ended up having a rather dramatic belly first landing with the nose pointed up. And then we look at its service as an airliner and what I also found quite fascinating was the interest of other airlines, particularly Qantas and Masr Airways, which was one of the ancestors of modern day Egypt Air. Those two airlines never took on the DH-91 and its passenger service remained with Imperial Airways. With the outbreak of World War II, the focus then shifts onto the aircraft service in that conflict, which was primarily primarily limited to the early, early years of that conflict, and we find it did sterling service in supplying 
the Allied forces in Iceland with their mail and supplies. The book then concludes with some beautiful illustrations and profiles. The profiles are a goldmine for anyone who wants to model this aircraft. And as you can also see, the color profiles done by Juanita Frenzi at Aero Illustrations are utterly impeccable and a feast for the eyes. There is also a small chapter at the back detailing a beautiful large-scale flying model of the Albatross. The book is extensively illustrated throughout, as no doubt you've seen throughout the preceding minutes. And the text flows wonderfully. Rob has a great, easy-flowing style with a gentle sense of humour that is sprinkled throughout. It is a wonderful, easy read, informative and fascinating. This book will stand the test of time as being the definitive volume about this aesthetically pleasing, but imperfect, aircraft. Rob has a beautiful, free-flowing, informative and gently humorous style that makes reading this book an absolute joy. And as I've continuously said, the photos and the illustrations are utterly spectacular. So for all of this, it is a five captain's hats. If you are a buff for propeller aircraft, pre-World War II aircraft, by all means, please hunt this book down, add it to your bookshelves. You will be rewarded with hours and hours of wonderful information and absolutely stunning photos and illustrations. Could not recommend it highly enough. Enjoy and happy reading!